Chapter minus 23.32, The Time Game, by Frank. As everyone applauded, Blizzard said, Thank you for coming. See you next time. While everyone was leaving, Blizzard and Orpheus made their way over to us. Orpheus, said Blizzard, meet our crew of wonder makers. The charmers, said Orpheus. I'm impressed. I heard how you charmed not only a giant serpent, but also a dragon. Orpheus was staring at Minnow and Sky. Sky blushed. I had to rescue one of my lost selves, she said, so I was ready to do anything. Still, said Orpheus, very brave. Minnow smiled at Orpheus. We put someone called Orpheus into our computer game at home, said Minnow. I heard, said Orpheus, great choice. I felt a bit left out, and I could see that Ben was feeling it too. But then Orpheus turned to both of us and shook our hands. And you two champions, he said, it's about time the men of the future recognise that women are brilliant beings and most certainly not inferior to anyone. I'm overjoyed to know that this one grows up to be the captain of the Pirate Queen. Ben grinned, looking suddenly very proud to be standing next to Skye. And this one, said Orpheus, nodding at Minnow. Who could find a better or more loyal friend? I grinned. No one, I said. It was Minnow's idea to create the Time Again game, and that was the game that led us to realise that there was something going on, or we wouldn't have been able to save Sky from the time virus. Orpheus nodded. Speak it, my son, he said. Speak it. I smiled. You have a brilliant cousin, he said, with a most wonderful heart. Turning to Minnow, he added, That lying Isle of Thieve, you must never worry that your heart will become diseased like hers. I happen to know that your heart is going to guide you to the most amazing places in the universe. Minnow beamed. I'd say it already has, she said. Look where we are. Orpheus laughed, and then turning to me, he asked, Are you ready to visit the Time Garden? the home of the real time game. <gasps> Can we, I asked, turning to give Minnow a high five. All of us, asked Minnow. Of course, said Orpheus. Minnow looked as if she was about to burst. You look so much like the character we drew in our game. The time again game, asked Orpheus. Minnow nodded. Somehow the universe aligned our lives, said Orpheus. We don't know how probably from the decades of magic and goodness wished upon us by our wonderful ancestors. Minnow beamed. I know now that my parents have been coming to Moreskimar for a long time and they told me that their mothers and fathers came here too, so I think you're right. Blizzard beamed. Of course he's right. He's Orpheus. Minnow laughed as Blizzard picked her up, even though she was 11 years old. Minnow was still quite tiny. Come on, he said, let's go. Us too, asked Solo and Esher running into the room. Yep, said Blizzard. I felt myself almost floating to the ceiling with excitement. I had no idea where the time garden was, but I felt that I was destined to go there, that maybe I'd been born for the very purpose of going there. It was the strangest feeling. When we left the melting classroom, Blizzard and Orpheus led us back to the Moreskimar Tower. When we were about halfway up the tower, Blizzard turned towards a group of tree houses that were nestled into the branches of the tree that coils its way around the tower. In behind one of the tree houses was a platform, and tethered to that was a flying machine. It reminded me of Ezekiel's chariot, except it had sails and a tall mast which flew a pirate's flag. What's this ship called? asked Skye. The Time Fairy, said Blizzard, gesturing to the ship's rigging. As we looked up, seven huge sails were billowing in the breeze, and in the rigging and all along the ropes sat thousands upon thousands of tiny Time Fairies. Minnow and Skye squealed with excitement as the entire crew burst into applause. Time Fairies, said Skye, the best!